Welcome back to Buffalo Times. I'm Nancy Shade. I'm here at the Flower Basket in Hardwick with Nora Duluth. And she is the third owner of this shop. And it's located right across the river from the three corners when you come into Hardwick off of Route 15. And there are a myriad ways to get to the shop. So we'll talk about that with Nora, and we'll find out what she thinks is the best way to get here. And then I'll add my two cents in some way or other, because our bridge to it across the Lamoille River from the health food store is not operating. Hopefully, it'll be operating by the fall, maybe, but they say it might take longer. What do you think about that, Nora? Oh, well, like you said, there are a myriad of ways to get to the flower basket. Um, as far as the bridge construction, I'm not quite sure when it will be. So right now we're just planning on other ways to get here. Um, my favorite way is to, when I'm driving, to go across the Church Street Bridge off of Wilkett Street. Um, but if you do that, then you miss out on our beautiful mural. <laughs> so if you keep going on Wilkett Street through the three corners, then you can glance over and see our beautiful mural that we have of a mum outside the shop that was painted by Meredith Muse, who's actually a tattoo artist. Um, she painted that a couple, about a year and a half ago. Um, and then you can hang a left and come in through Church Street, which is a lovely way you get to go through um, one of our historic neighborhoods here in Hardwick and swoop on down towards the river and into our parking lot just outside the shop. Yes, and you go past, when you go that way, you mm -hmm. make a turn past the big wall that you see with the three horse, white horses that's on right, it. right, exactly. That beautiful yeah. mural done by the Hardwick Elementary School so students. So that, that's yeah. the yep. little tricky place to find. It is, yeah. It's a little bit like Brigadoon, you know. You see the mural across the river. <laughs> it's coming in and out of the fog. You make a left, you make a left. You think it then, and all of a sudden, there it is. You're in Brigadoon, full of beautiful flowers. <laughs> that's right. And tell yep. us about how you arrived here and a little yes. bit of the story of Finding Hardwick is How I personally came place. here. Absolutely. A little bit also like Brigadoon. I came here from Scotland. <laughs> really? Um, a little Scottish link there. So um, I, my partner and I were living in Scotland at the time and were volunteering at a community, an intentional community, um, that's actually connected with Heartbeat here in Hardwick. And I attended a conference at Heartbeat and fell in love with Hardwick and Heartbeat. And my partner and I decided to come over here to volunteer at Heartbeat. So I first learned about Hardwick through Heartbeat and very quickly fell in love with the Northeast Kingdom. And after we finished our volunteering commitment, um, I, we moved into Hardwick itself and the shop came up for sale. And my husband then looked at me and said, Nora, I think that you should really look into buying that. I think that would be a great fit for us. Um, and so I talked to Nicole and Dennis, who were the owners then, and made an offer. And shadowed Nicole for a few months and then bought the business in July 2019. That is a wonderful story. <laughs> yeah. So you knew Hannah and John and Parker and Thomas. Absolutely, and yes, exactly. Ann and everybody oh, so, so that we used to have yep. lunch with on Thursdays that's when right. we were at the little church there. And community meal. And that's where I think I would seen you there before. That could be, yeah. Well, um, tell me your experience with flowers and also, the, I understand your community interest mm -hmm. and that you have a sunshine, uh, is it the sunshine bouquet? Mm -hmm. that They can call you on the telephone and order for somebody that they feel mm -hmm. is worthy of receiving a, um, some sort of a floral arrangement. Right, exactly. So a couple of different uh, things that we touched on there. The, the, the sunshine bouquet, let me just show you what this looks like, is a beautiful $25 arrangement. This is just a sample that we have, but they're generally about that size. 
And these are completely funded by roundups. So anytime anyone makes a purchase, I'll ask them, would you like to round up for our Sunshine Fund? And so all those little nickels and dimes, 50 cents, people often chip in more than just rounding up to the nearest dollar. And what is roundup? A roundup is when you make a purchase for a certain amount and then you round up the remainder of the change to the next whole dollar. Oh. So, for example, if you bought um, a piece of chocolate for 98 cents, I'd say, would you like to round up for the Sunshine Fund? And those two cents would go towards giving somebody a beautiful sunshine bouquet at the oh, end of the week. Oh, <laughs> very good. Thank yeah. you for explaining Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That's good. Um, yeah, and so that's been a huge success. We're able to donate at least one bouquet every week, sometimes two or three. Um, and again, it's all based on customer donations that we keep in a separate account. And then when you make a roundup, or even any time you make a purchase, you can always suggest or nominate somebody to receive the bouquet. Um, that way we keep the bouquets moving around the community, and um, the nominations have come from, oh, the people who have been nominated have ranged from the Hardwick Rescue Squad, to the folks at the mobile station, to my favorite vet, to I know I want somebody who's living in isolation right now, she could really use a pick-me-up. Um, so it's just been a huge range of nominees which I love because it, it's a way for me to learn more about what's going on in the community and to give back. And you have vendors that you also uh, that participate in the shop and Absolutely. there's quite a list of them here. They're yeah. everything from Be Loved to Dendro <laughs> to King, right. so Kingdom Values and Lynette and Courtney and G Boo Gardens and Tina's Treasures and Sandalwood Farm and the Rowdy Sprout yeah. Sheep Shop. Sterling College. What's yes. that? that? You have to tell us about that. Uh, sumptuous syrups. Yummy, yummy, <laughs> yummy. Now we know where we can come for those. Right. <laughs> Linda does a good job with that. And Don. Uphill Pottery and Zella Hava Garden Woodbury. Mm. What is that? Right. So this is actually a list of all of our vendors that's on the back of one of our business cards that we attach to our arrangements and we tick off where the flowers have come from. Or if you've bought a, a gift, for example, um, this beautiful pot is made by Katrina Ratinel here of Uphill Pottery. So I would attach this card with it and then tick off that the pot is from Uphill Pottery here in Hardwick. Um, and I need to get another card because this is an incomplete list. Oh, really? <laughs> as many you have names as we more have on there, now. we have so many more local vendors. Yeah, oh, that's it's really great. Now, astounding. how did you come to that decision? <laughs> I think that's fairly new, isn't it? Well, it's something that's important to me. When I purchased the flower basket in 2019, I actually was struggling with whether or not to create it as a nonprofit or as a for profit business. Um, community involvement, giving back to the community, is just critical to me. It's part of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I love about being an entrepreneur is that I'm able to put my personal values into the bones of the business. Um, so one of the, thing that's, one of the things that's critical to me is to support my local community. Mm -hmm. um, so I shop locally as much as I can. And it's just a decision that I make when I purchase products. Um, I know that I really want to have jewelry in the shop, so I look around for a local jeweler and I um, establish a connection with a local maker and carry her carry her upcycled leather earrings. Um, I know that I want pottery in the shop, so I look around for local potters and chose to go with Katrina of Uphill Pottery. So it's, it's just something that's built into the fabric of the business. Um, and I realized it was special when people were commenting on it, so I decided, well, I might as well make a tag <laughs> that yeah, says that Yeah, that was a this. good idea because yeah. then people know they know these people that they're buying from exactly. as well. A lot of people know them. Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's uh, a very good way to think about doing business. Yep. Could you tell me something about the flowers and how, um, how people do, can they choose their own arrangements? Or hmm. how does it work when you have buckets of flowers when that starts happening? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do, um, we always have fresh flowers in the shop. We source from Green Mountain Flower Supply for all of our premium stems or our, all of our non-local stems and then all of our, during the summer especially, we'll be getting in lots and lots of local flowers. Um, these ran ranunculus, for example, are grown in Irisburg by Dendro LLC. And so if you were to come into the shop or to call me on the phone, um, you could ask me, you could say, Nora, I saw an amazing video that you did on Facebook last week where you had those <laughs> super cool ranunculus. I really want one. Give me a ranunculus. <laughs> and you did have orchids here. She had yes. stems of orchids, which are clusters of mm. flowers. Yes, the dendrobium and orchids. they were only $8. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that is very reasonable. Roses are 
like yep. very expensive, aren't they? Well, it's all market priced. So, for example, right now, um, our, many of our growers of roses down in Ecuador and Colombia are facing really extreme weather conditions. Right. So the flooding in Ecuador has been devastating to our rose growers and our Elstermeria lily growers. Um, so because of that, the rose prices go up. Mm -hmm. So it's just like buying fresh fish. <laughs> you know, um, having a flower shop is a lot like having a restaurant. Everything fluctuates based on what's happening in the world around us. Mm -hmm. um, and also due to COVID, uh, current flower production is a little bit less than it was in the past because growers decided to plant fewer flowers. Mm -hmm. So we're facing um, a little bit of a higher price for our imported flowers. Fortunately, we live in the Northeast Kingdom. So I'm able to buy, um, for example, a ranunculus or a forsythia uh, from local growers. We're beginning in tulips from Mother's Day from local growers, and that will just keep going up. So during the summer, almost 80 to 70 percent of our flowers will be locally grown. And with that, the market prices that we've seen, for example, with the flooding, don't have as large of an impact um, because we're just sourcing from our neighbors. And um, what will you have outside? when it's time to buy plants. Oh my gosh, our annuals, yes. I see you have pansies out <laughs> we there do. now. We do, have, we have the last of our la spring they, pansies. They're hardy. They are fantastic, they love the snow. They're like, bring it on, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but coming up towards Mother's Day, Mother's Day is May 9th, of course. Um, and we'll I have didn't hanging. know that. Oh, okay, Mother's Day is May 9th, okay. Sunday, first sun uh, second Sunday in May. Um, and we'll have hanging baskets. We'll have all, all of our hanging baskets and outdoor annuals are grown uh, locally, either by Claussens or Paquette full of posies, both of them down in southern Vermont. Um, so we have Vermont hardy annuals that we will have for sale, and they'll all be on display outside the shop. So when you're driving along Wilkett and you see through the fog of Brigadoon, the mural, then you'll see this pop of color of all of our beautiful hanging baskets. And it's irresistible. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's the hope. So, and how many people work with you? Our team right now is about, ooh, I think there's five of us all together. That's a lot of people. Um, it is, it is. Um, we're at, uh, when, you're, when you're looking, when you're analyzing labor, you think about, uh, something I think about is full-time equivalency. Um, so right now I have me at one full-time equivalent, and then I have um, the other four team members equal another full-time equivalent. So the total is about 80 hours of labor a week. Mm -hmm. um, but during peak days, like Mother's Day, for example, May 9th, Mother's Day. <laughs> um, it's easy to forget when it is. But during peak times like that, we're all going to be here. It's going to be, you know, six people in and out of the shop working as hard as we can to make sure that we get as many flowers as we can out the door. And you also have teas as a we beverage. Do. And you have caffeinated and non-caffeinated. We do. And they're very interesting, mm. uh, different recipes that are put together in these teas. <laughs> so what is your favorite? Oh my gosh. Well, I sell loose tea, so it's dried tea that I sell loose leaf and we package them into um, tea bags as well as part of our gift sets. For example, this, um, this gift set is called Tea in the Garden and it features two of Katrina's mugs. Oh, adorable. It features um, Hudson Valley Seed Company seeds and they're beautiful art packs. I know, they're just stunning. Wow. Aren't those lovely? Yes. We have pansies and we have campfire. Rutabecchia. Rutabecchia. Does that yeah. come up every year, Rutabecchia? It self-pollinates, yes. I thought so, it did because yeah. somebody told me it didn't, but I keep getting more and yeah. more. <laughs> Once and it's I found a happy them. spot, yep, okay. absolutely. So this is yeah. um, Cosmos. Yeah, they're another self-pollinator. Yes, exactly. Oh, and so lovely. each one of these is just a selection of the beautiful selection of Hudson Valley seeds we have. This happens to be those three. Uh -huh. And then I've worked with my friends here on Main Street in Hardwick to include a gardening book from Galaxy Bookstore and a tea towel from Whistle Emporium. Oh, and then, as you mentioned, that. our beautiful teas. And these just happen to be my two favorite teas <laughs> that oh, we carry in great. the shop that are black, included with this gift set. Black currant tea yep. and a rose, kangu. rose, what is it called? Rose kangu tea. What is kangu? Uh, so a rose kangu tea is, um, it's on a black Assam tea base and then it add, rose petals are added and um, it's a really fragrant tea. It has this beautiful floral scent that comes out when you add the hot water. Um, and it's actually quite sweet tasting. Wonderful. Um, and you could add just a tiny little bit of sugar to it. and it's Honey just, or maple syrup too? Well, actually, I prefer, sugar. I usually don't drink sugar. <laughs> but with this particular tea, um, just to get that real clean floral flavor, I, I recommend, see. I actually I recommend understand. white sugar. Very good. Yeah, which Thank is unusual you. for me. The yeah. black currant tea is fantastic with maple. So if you're a maple drinker, um, yeah. I would drink the black currant tea My with that. My husband buys gallons of it. Oh, you've got to. We're in, we're in the Northeast Kingdom. <laughs> 
<laughs> you have to drink maple syrup. <laughs> the, the other thing, um, you do have, you take the petals off the flowers and you use them. I saw the over oh, there yes, that you use them for uh, potpourri. Yeah, I'm looking around because I usually have a sachet of potpourri around. Yeah. I do actually have a little bit of potpourri mixed in with our gardener's gift set down here. This is some dried rose petals. Oh, could I hold this? Absolutely, yeah. Here's a few more. There's a yellow rose petal there. They're such interesting shapes. Yes, they're that's very fascinating. Sort of, they're all so different all the yep. time, like snowflakes. And they become quite well, structural when they dry. You know, a fresh rose petal is, you know, just a simple scallop, but when they dry, they have this incredible shape and texture and form that I think is And you is can delightful. either have them open on a table mm -hmm. or you can put them in a sachet. Exactly. So that's that's a way to use the way to use the petals if yep. the flowers drop them. Right, and I recommend that, you know, when you buy per, when you purchase fresh flowers from a florist, the flowers will eventually die. They're they're on their way to going. Um, and so one thing that you could do with the flowers to preserve them is to dry them, and um, they'll last for years that way. Do you do those, that in your class? Do you teach people how to dry flowers? That's or a how to idea. Take, or how to take and um, somehow they put the flower onto a piece of glass and it photographs mm. onto the paper. Well, you could do you, press flowers. Do you know flowers. what I'm talking about? Well, one thing that you could do is press flowers, uh -huh. um, which is a really traditional technique of saving flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so glad that you mentioned our class because we, we had classes pre-COVID um, about twice, once every other week. Yeah, we had a yeah. little tete-a-tete -tete before we started <laughs> Exactly. So, mm. <laughs> it's not me. She's, she has told me some things that I, I thought were very interesting. <laughs> so you're doing a class where you're teaching different... Um, Disciplines with flowers. Well, every other week, it, there's such a wide range of things that are involved in our shop, from indoor plants, outdoor plants. Um, Lynette Courtney and I would work together. So Lynette Courtney is somebody that people might know she, locally. Oh, she's amazing. Uh, she's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I remember I, <laughs> they they, we, yeah. they used to keep the garden down at the farmers market, and they yeah. weeded and weeded and got all the weeds out. And, Oh, they were so good. Yeah, were their mother, her, their mother was there then. Mm, yeah. Right, so Lynette Courtney and her sister and her mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Lynette Courtney is a naturalist that I work with here in the shop. I often refer people to her when they have questions about houseplants. Um, and Lynette was, uh, and I were teaching a class together every other week. Um, and it wasn't Lynette every other week, but so Lynette taught maybe three or four classes. And then some of the classes that we taught were tea and flowers. So we would share tea to together and make a flower arrangement. Um, and other classes were crafting classes. So we did that pre-COVID and I got stuck in the idea that if you have a class that has to be inside, everybody has to be together, we can't do that online. And then of course we can. <laughs> so after Mother's Day, we hope to ramp up again with our classes. Um, and I love the idea of a flower pressing class. That would be something that would be really fun to do. And tea parties are fun mm, for children. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's a woman over in Hyde Park. I think she teaches people how to she lives at the governor's mansion, and they have tea parties there. How sweet. And so you know how some little children go and have nails done and oh, things right, like that exactly. for a birthday party? Yep. Well, to have a little tea party mm. and, you know, introduce them to the different flowers right. is kind of a fun thing to do for That's children. That's a great and idea. It also the teaches them social, social norms mm, right. in a way. And we are living in such a time of COVID that... It, we ha our social norms have changed mm -hmm. so much. We have to keep far apart, but at, at a rounded table with three little people, you know, a little tea party, mm. like, you know. That's a sweet idea. It's just a nice thing to do. Yeah. And well, it introduces them to tea. And yeah. also the man that owns the uh, Danville Inn, he collects teapots. Mm. You have never, have you ever been there for Not breakfast? No. They have a great breakfast buffet when this COVID is settled. Um, you can go in there and he changes everything every season. Mm. It's a different motif. And so it's really fun to go there and see those teapots. So mm. I think your teas are just amazing. So oh, wonderful. I, I'll have to come in and get some of those. Yes. Well, we do have regular customers who have their teas that they, they come in and get quite frequently. Um, and I'm really happy to do that. I buy, I purchase in tea from um, two different tea producers. Um, and I'm always looking for new sources as well. Um, there's quite a few herbalists in the area, uh, and I'm in conversation with a couple of a local herbalists to bring in a, a line of herbal teas uh, that are made in the Northeast Kingdom. I have a patch of mint outside my oh, front fantastic. door. <laughs> it's like huge. It's so hardy, isn't it? And, and it, it spreads. Yep. It just keeps growing sure if you does. don't cut it. Um, so 
I guess you are a resource also for different plants and people can come yep, to you with, with their needs and how do you like them to um, reach out to you? Hmm. So um, with our plants, we all of our plants are grown in Vermont um, and all of our indoor plants, I specialize in house plants um, so we don't do as many gardening plants as other resources locally. Um, but I actually receive plants in from our wholesaler once a week. So if you have a special request or a plant that you're looking for that you can't find, uh, you can call me. We could talk on the phone for a bit, which is perfect and ideal. Uh, you can also email me at theflowerbasketvt at gmail.com. You can contact me through our website, theflowerbasketvt.com, or you can contact me through our Facebook page or through our Instagram page. And the best way to find those is to search for the Flower Basket Hardwick. Um, and then once you contact me, then I can go ahead and place an order with our wholesaler um, and even arrange a visit with Lynette for you, if, <laughs> if Lynette is willing and able. That's wonderful. Um, and we can, all of our plants, when we pot them up in their decorative pots, include uh, a care tag so that you have some information about how to take care of your plant. It's very good. Yeah. Um, let me think, what else <laughs> did we want to talk about here? You have satchels with your name on it. Yes, we have so those shopping the, bags. Yes, yes, we need shopping <laughs> bags all the time. I know, it's too bad that the camera faces this way. We brought as many things as we could in front well, of the camera yeah, <laughs> to display and, them. And on the back shelf, you have your um, pots and yep, cups. Exactly. And, so uh, all of our all of wreaths. Our, yep, all of our spring wreaths are made um, using a grapevine base that was sourced in Woodbury. And then we just, all of our dry flowers are from flowers that we have here in the shop, and many of those are local. Uh, Sterling College, for example, was one of our flower providers last year, and we'll be purchasing them, them again this year. With the dried flowers? Uh, so we purchase in the fresh flowers, and then during the summer, I actually hold about a third of those off to the side and dry them for use during the fall and the, um, and the winter. And people can dry their own and add to the wreath Absolutely. since it has space where yep. you can change it and move it around. Them very open. Yeah. So you can always keep the wreath. Exactly. Yes, I have a customer who we delivered a wreath to last Mother's Day, who I made a delivery to for Valentine's Day, and she was all, you know, she had her mask on, I had my mask on, I just disinfected my hands, and she said, Nora, you have to come inside and see my wreath. <laughs> and I was shocked. She had her wreath from nine months ago hanging above her mantle in her living room, and it was stunning. It was just in beautiful shape. So they are very long-lasting. When I got married at 60, somebody sent me a, a wreath for oh, my hair. Oh, a crown. And yep. it had a crown, and it had orchids in it. Ooh. But it was hand-tied. Hand, uh, yep. They used some sort of, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a vine. Huh. It was more of a reed. Okay. And yep. it, was, it was just amazing. Yeah. And yep. it just had a bow in the back. And oh, how beautiful. It, yeah. It was, it was amazing to open yeah. a box, and this friend had sent it to me. I, mm. I didn't even think of putting something <laughs> on my head. <laughs> and yeah. It worked out very well. Well, my, one so, of my design aesthetics with flowers is to keep it as simple as possible. So I just, flowers are so stunning. You know, they just... They're mesmerizing in and of themselves, so I tend to just arrange in very simple containers, just a glass vase, and really just showcase that, like your with like your your crown, just as simple as possible to really keep that flower. Do you have any foremost. weddings coming up? We do, yeah. Um, wedding season 2021 is definitely picking up. Um, people have been postponing for a whole year, so yeah, and 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 that's not only for me, but all of the wedding industry in Northeast Kingdom is actually pretty. It's a, it's a large component of our um, of what folks do here of our of our economy. So uh, we have lots of wedding vendors in the area that I work in collaboration with, good, um, including good. floral designers. Good. So even we do do weddings at the Flower Basket, good. but we're not really an event designer. We're more of a flower shop. Um, so I'll often collaborate with other local designers um, when I have a wedding coming up, and we'll you know, work with them to make sure that the wedding is exactly what the bride and groom want, or bride and bride. Or it sounds groom. like you're doing a great job with this. Thank you. And I wish yeah. you all the best. I'm sure that these azaleas will go out very quickly. <laughs> They're so gorgeous. They're, yeah. they, are. Yep. they are. They don't, they don't even look real. I, I mean, know. they do. They, I, I can tell how soft they are. Yep. But they're just so full and rich. Yeah, well, we, we have fantastic wholesalers. So those azalea, for example, are from Claussen, Stone, and Colchester. And we brought those in as an alternative to Easter lilies, um, something that I'm really aware of. Oh, is, yes, um, the animals. Yeah, Tell exactly. us about that. Tell so, us how you found that out. And that's yeah. a, a good story. I'd yeah. love to hear that. So one of the advantages of being a small business owner is that 
my vet is everybody else's vet. <laughs> um, so we, I, I work with Andrea here at the Hardwood Vet, and she and I were talking about plants and toxicity for cats especially, because cats are quite sensitive to, to house plants. Um, and Easter lilies are one of the most toxic plants for cats. Um, so this year when I bought in my plants for Easter, I did buy in some Easter lilies per special request by customers. Um, but I made sure to make sure that we had a wide variety of plants, especially the azaleas, as an alternative because you just don't want to put your cat at risk. Um, and it was so good for me to, to hear from Andrea that that is absolutely true, that, you know, keep the Easter lilies out of the house if you have a cat. And um, she's my vet, so I do what she says. <laughs> Very good. So. My cat um, got into the Christmas cactus. Oh, Are Christmas yeah. cactus okay? As far as I know, they're not as toxic as other plants. Um, he, there's a ripped few plants. The, he ripped them, I mean, like they were in pieces. Oh, so my gosh. So there was somebody on Facebook that was looking for cuttings. Oh. So I, I responded. <laughs> my cat made some cuttings for you. <laughs> <laughs> I responded, and this gentleman showed up at the door. He said, I'm, I, I, I've come for the cuttings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cuttings. Okay, got it. <laughs> well, I tried to stick them back into the soil, but they don't, they don't, you have to put them in water to make the roots yeah, grow. Yeah, it's a little bit of a process. So yep. I gave him, I bundled them up, and off he went with them. Oh, good. Well, so, yeah, save and share alike, right? Oh, I, whoever thought that somebody would put on Facebook that they were right. lo looking for plant cuttings for people. In the perfect timing. But, you know, people really engage with, with plants. They're all so different, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they really are. And I and, see that someone will come into the shop, and I'm like, oh... I got it. You're looking for a house plant. You can see it. And as soon as someone opens the door, I can tell there's a house plant vibe. Now that's a good businesswoman. <laughs> it's, it's really it's something I've really learned, actually. So, yeah. um, and, and then th that person will take the process of going through the shop and kind of have a conversation with every house plant, and then something will happen. They'll look, and they'll they'll see it. It'll be like love across the room, you know. <laughs> The person in that house plant, their <laughs> eyes will lock, and that's it. Like they have oh, found their family. That's great. And it's just a wonderful experience. Well, you <laughs> also have a lot of succulents over there in little yep. pots. Yeah, similar and I to would this think one that over they here. would be great birthday. <laughs> yes, great, great yeah. birthday presents for. Our little um, hippo. I'm going to pick him up by the, by the nose. <laughs> We've got a rhino here. Isn't that the cutest? <laughs> yes, it is. And this will, how big will this get? I mean, it's already fresh growth. It is, yeah. So it's grown a good two or three inches since I brought in that little succulent about two months ago. That's a lot. Um, it is, yeah. It's, it, the size of the pot will restrict it a little bit. Uh -huh. um, and a good way to figure out the pot diameter that you need is to measure from around the base of the plant to make sure that it's room for its roots to grow. Um, and I love these pots because they actually have quite a bit of space for the roots to grow um, within the shape of the pot itself. And I love bringing in cute items like that. Yeah. So, a lot of color. Well, my husband bought a round cactus, mm. and now it's like, right. stop! <laughs> And Didn't keep it I shape. noticed the kitten doesn't bother with the cactus. Well, good. That's I mean, it has a lot of spikes on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it, cactus it, are generally pretty good with cats. Well, <laughs> sometimes they like to dig in the dirt mm -hmm. too. When boy, when spring comes, yeah. out the door you go. Right? You go dig in all the dirt you want. <laughs> but exactly. they're funny, so you have to be careful with plants with animals. That's you do. That's good to hear. Yep. And we have a list that we keep at the counter, um, and we've, we're, we're working with signage now in the shop. We're putting up new signs. Um, one of the signs that we're working on is toxic plants for cats um, and, cat and plants that are fine for cats. So it's um, Do you have know. a sign at the end of this uh, where the horses are along the side of the wall, the white horses? Oh, I would. At the end of that road? We don't, no. Because so. it's sort of hard to know which road to turn down It there. is a little tricky. That's the whole And maybe you could aspect. do a nice horse mm -hmm. to match the white horses. Just a cut out. If somebody could cut out flower or a flower... Or I don't know what you yeah. would do. You'd have to figure that That's out. That's a lovely idea. But, but yeah. to have a sign there and that would be on both sides, so if they're coming from Church Street down mm -hmm. or, well, they wouldn't be coming from, I don't know the name of the street that's parallel to the street that's out. Right, Highland. Highland. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, I myself know exactly how to get here, but I was mm. like, oh, do I go this way or that? And I realized it was this driveway. Right. The so, one with the lights on it. Right, exactly. Are the lights on in the, in the, at night? I keep, so I have LED lighting outside that's cafe style LED lighting. But are lighting. the light posts on the road on? I, yes. 
Okay. Yeah, at, yeah. Those are well, they're, they're actually solar. They have a solar panel on them, so they they flip on at night. I see. Um, so they, they, I'm actually looking out the window right now. I see them. They're not on yeah. right now. But it's they such are on a nice night. building. It's such a nice place mm. to be, right it's, by the river. Yep, tucked down into the river. Yes. Um, absolutely. The yellow or orange color of this flower. Mm, when you see area. rocks like that in the river, mm. and you use a, a stone cutter to cut into them. They're like a geode. They're beautiful oh, colors. Interesting. And they're, it's a special rock, and they have yep. them here. This is the longest contiguous river in the state. I didn't the realize Lamoille that. The Lamoille River. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a and really special And that's why we need our bridge fix, so mm. we can come from town over to this building. Mm. And yeah. you know the lamp lady here. Yes, Diana. Diana is just above us here in the building, and yep. we're actually working with her to bring some of her lamps into the shop. Oh, she that's such good work. news. <laughs> she, does, she makes the lampshades. She does, yep. Okay, yeah. so this collaboration is really happening, folks, <laughs> and I hope you come by to visit here with Nora and buy whatever flower that talks to you. <laughs> They'll talk to you. See you next time.